Hello everyone. So today we're going to be making a basic UFO or flying saucer in BloxCAD. If you've never used BloxCAD before, you're going to go to BloxCAD3D.com. If you are one of my students, then you're going to go up here to log in. You're going to sign in with Google using your school email account and password. Um, it'll do something like this possibly if you're already logged in you just click on the correct email address if you're already logged in and there you are if not you'll have to register for an account now first things first let's talk about the different shapes we're going to use the only shapes the only 3d shapes we're going to be using today are spheres and cubes I'm not going to bring a cube in just yet uh, we need to work with the sphere first. Now, when I originally made this, I wanted it to be pretty large because uh, I may be putting extra details in later after this, and you could put extra details in later as well, but making it a little bit bigger makes it easier to do that. So, I've made the radius of the sphere 60. Let's just go ahead and render that, see what it looks like. Okay, there's your sphere, radius of 60. If you don't remember what radius is, radius is the distance from the center of the sphere to any point on the outside so in other words from here out here to the outside edge is uh, 60 units long now next thing we're going to want to do because you notice this is not a very smooth sphere is it you got a lot of uh, very obvious what they call faces on this so I want to make it as smooth as possible so I'm going to put go to the transform tab and click sides Bring over here and put the sphere inside that now you can do this however many sides you want I would suggest not going overboard on it no more than 150 because it will take much much longer for your system to render it and depending on what your computer system is whether you're doing this on an iPad or a Chromebook or a full-fledged you know gaming laptop or or desktop that's meant for 3d rendering um, it could take could be pretty quick could take a while I'm gonna do it at 30 for right now it didn't really do much to it did it so I'm gonna bump it up to 100 myself but you notice how much longer that took I mean it still wasn't very long but then again I'm on a on a pretty decent um, computer system but keep that in mind anytime you use this the sides the more you put in the longer it's going to take if I put in a thousand we'd be sitting here quite a while I would think so next we've got this done I want to take a transform uh, scale and put that on top of it remember this is going to do things in order so first it creates a sphere then it gives it a hundred sides then it will do whatever scaling you're going to do so scaling basically means you're going to smash it or stretch it along one or more axes so the X Y or Z X is the red axis here green is the Y axis and Z is this up and down which is a uh, blue or black so for our purposes here I want to smash it down on the Z axis so I'm going to do that by a factor of 0.5 which is basically um, taking the scale down by half on that one axis and now we're actually starting to look a little more like a UFO but not completely so what I need to do is I need to cut this because UFO normally doesn't have these round I mean the ones that I've seen don't normally have these rounded edges and I want it to be more of a point so we're going to bring in a cube. I am going to make this 150 by 150 by 50. And an important thing to remember uh, is you've got to make sure it's either centered or not centered for our purposes. Usually I do them centered just because I like it. It's easier for me that way. So I'm going to center it. I'm going to 
translate it, which means I either I move it in one direction or another along one of these axes. So either the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis. I'm going to move it on the z-axis down 10. So it's going to go, well, let's, let's see what it looks like without the, the translate. There it is without the translate. You've barely got any of the sphere sticking out of the top. That's why I want to move it down 10. So let's do that. And there we have a lot more sticking out of the top. There's none on the bottom. So, okay, now we've got a square and part of a sphere. Basically, we want to go to set ops, use a difference. Difference, think of it like subtraction. We take our sphere, we want to subtract that cube or what where that cube is that area from it so render and now we have the start of our UFO so all I want to do now to make this very easy because I mean why not make it easier I want to right click on this duplicate that code and we're going to use another transform tool called a mirror across. We're going to leave it at, uh, you know what, let's change it to X and Z and let's see what happens. Well, we don't see any difference there, do we? Let's try Y and Z. Well, these are not really helping make my point. Let's do X and Y. There we go. So it mirrored it across this way. Um, I think it didn't mirror this. I don't. I'm not sure. I think just because we're already centered up on it. If it had been moved over a little bit uh, in this direction, then there would have been another one moved in this direction because that was moving it either across the x-axis or across the the y-axis in that direction. But this time we were moving it up and down uh, the z-axis. Okay, so still not quite quite there yet this bottom one either the bottom one or the top one needs to be moved in one direction or another so that these meet so I'm going to put a translate I'm gonna I'm gonna do it on the bottom one and we're gonna move it up by 30 keep in mind yes I've already done this project so I already have all the numbers worked out if you do a project on your own sometimes it might be a trial and error process Yes, they have nice guidelines on here that will help you out a lot. But sometimes, especially on this this z-axis, it's it's really kind of hard to tell sometimes. Um, and honestly, even on the sometimes you you think it's going to be one thing, and not. But I'm doing a lot of the math in my head. So we're going to do a set ops on this. We're going to just join it together. That means. Um, well, let's take it apart and render it like that. So now you can see we have the that basic shape already. All the union does is um, join these together. It means that it's making them ba essentially one shape according to the computer. And that also lets us take one of these transforms um, or you know any some of these other blocks and apply it to the entire thing instead of each half separately. So for this, I want to go ahead and put the color block on there. I'm going to give this kind of that, that gray silvery color. We'll re-render it. There it is. Now what's missing? Our dome up here. Uh, yes, I know. We could leave it like this and call it a UFO, but I want a dome up here. So. We're going to create another sphere. I'm going to make the radius of it 20. Um, again, I want it to be fairly smooth, so I'm going to bump the sides up to 100. And then I'm going to scale it. Keep in mind, this does everything in order, so the, the one outside is what the program does last. It's what it executes last. So again, I'm going to scale this down on the z-axis. In other words, smash this, this sphere. 
Let's see, I can put the sphere in right now, and we'll see what it looks like without this code. There's our basic sphere again. But now I'll put this in. It's going to smash it. I want to say smash. It just smashes it on the X or the Z axis. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, there we go. But it's not in the right place, you know, unless you turn it upside down. But I'm going to go ahead and put it on the top. So we need to do a translate. In other words, we need to translate it up on the Z axis by 25. We'll render it again. And there we are. Uh, I don't particularly want the green color there. That's the green color is just the default color down here. You can choose whatever your default color is going to be. But I like to put my own colors on it, especially because I like I take these and I put them in uh, like Cinema 4D and Blender, things like that. And it when you convert this to an OBJ file down here and, and download it. That uh, those different colors are what separates the different sections and allows you to apply different materials in Cinema 4D or Blender, um, or edit sep parts separately, or animate parts separately. What if I wanted? Um, maybe I put lights up here, but I only wanted the outside part to spin. You know, I could. If this was all the same color, I couldn't do that. It would just the whole object would be one solid object once I put it in in a Cinema 4D or Blender. So I'm going to change this to a very light blue. And there you have it. There is your basic UFO. Now, you can do also you can add all sorts of other stuff to it if you want. Um, my purpose with this was just to show you the basics or show you the basic uh, portion of it that you could add lights around it. Um, tell you what, let me show you. So, now we're back. Uh, well, obviously we're not in BloxCAD anymore. This is that same UFO after I worked on a little bit, um, added a few things. Obviously, we are now in a program called uh, Cinema 4D. But before I even got in that, I exported it uh, as an OBJ file. I imp you know, imported it into Blender. I put some dents in it, um, things that are not as easy to do in BloxCAD. They honestly are they're, they're much dents and things like that um, are much easier to do in a sculpting program like Blender. But I do find creating the basic bodies and, and shapes and everything are, um, I don't know, I, I like using BloxCAD. So as you can see, I hollowed out where that bubble was, uh, the, the glass dome. I have created an interior for the ship, which is kind of hard to see. Got a steering wheel. I haven't, I haven't finished uh, detailing it yet, but we'll work on it. It's got a chair, and as we zoom out, oh, and if anybody's ever looked at any of my other projects on BloxCAD, that's actually part of the stool that I made. I just took a part of it and used it for this. Um, in the back, we got some exhaust and some little um, heat sink type fins. About it, and of course I've dented them up. Because I meant for this to be kind of a an older an older UFO. I'm actually going to put a pilot in there and everything at some point. But uh, then in Cinema 4D, I can render this. This might take a second. Now Cinema 4D is not free software. Um, if you subscribe to the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, um, the light version of this comes with um, 
comes with uh, your subscription to that. So, and notice I've applied these different materials to it. And if you look here, I've also done a subdivision, which even makes it even smoother than what I made it in in uh, Blocks CAD. But uh, all these different things, these are the different components. I can take one now and, um, well, yeah. See, so there was my glass dome that I just moved. I don't want to move that by itself. Take the body, move it. Well, I said I could. Anyway, let's go ahead and re render that. And see what it looks like once it's completed rendering. It's really not taking too terribly long. The first time I, I did this I had a lot of uh, volumetric fog and things like that. Uh, extra lighting and it took much longer and honestly I didn't see much of a difference. So well, there it is. There is our UFO with obviously a lot of added extra detail which was done mostly in blocks CAD. Um, actually every bit of this was modeled in blocks CAD. The only difference is that I put the subdivision surface on it once it came in here and I added these different materials to it um, to give it that more that, that realer look to it. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this.